Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. Before we get to the video, let me say thank you to all of those who liked and subscribed for the last video. And please do the, if you had not subscribed yet to this channel um, and you like what you get here, then it's going to be in your best interest to go ahead and um, subscribe because you don't want to miss anything. The other thing is, is that that's the kind of thing that uh, YouTube looks at to see whether it's worth extending the, the, the breadth of, of, of the send outs that they do, of the promotion that they do for, for the channel. And um, because I'm not doing shorts, uh, they are punishing me, and which is, I understand it's business, but they're, they're punishing the channel is what a better way to put it, uh, by not sending this out as, as widely as they used to. So you can, you can halt that trend if you want to. And likes and subscriptions will, will, uh, will do that. Um, comments too. So now let's get down to brass tags. And that is, um, oh, before, what before, before, wait a minute, I got one more thing I got to bring up, which is skillful means. We'll begin, skillful means number seven. We'll begin, uh, and we've put it off. It will uh, two weeks and we will it will begin on January the 22nd. It will be January 22, 29, and February 5. Those are three consecutive Saturdays. So um, that's a that, that's available to you. If you've not been through one or been had an awakening session directly with me, I can certainly advise it. Uh, I can certainly recommend it. I can't really advise it. <laughs> You'll have to decide on that that part. So in my practice, what I see is that the people who have the most difficulty waking up and the most are the, the sometimes they're the same people who have the most difficulty staying awake are people that are, let us use the word, invested in their character. So what I mean by that is that you're invested in your own beliefs. You're, you, there's no point in coming to me if you're looking for confirmation of your beliefs about enlightenment, because I can assure you that if we have a successful session, we will shatter those beliefs. It's never failed to happen in all the awakenings I've done. Every single time, nobody ever woke up and went, gee, this is as I, as I thought, just as I thought it would be. It just does not happen. Um, so if you are looking for confirmation of what you think about enlightenment, don't come here. Don't, as a matter of fact, and there's no point you're going anywhere else either. This is only one authentic awakening and it will shatter those beliefs. And it doesn't matter how well you know all this. Um, I was a seeker for 24 years and when awakening hit me, I just couldn't believe it just couldn't believe it. And I had actually had a glimpse uh, 14 years before. <clears throat> anyway, most of you have heard that. Um, so when Jesus said, be as little children, if you want to enter heaven, then you must change your ways and be as little children. So changing our ways for most of us is being little children is being willing to have a child mind. Uh, and a child mind is not heavily invested in much of anything. You know, they, they are open. Children are very, very open. They're, they're easy to influence, which is good or bad. But there is, um, but there's an openness about a child. It's very, very curious. And we seem to lose that curiosity as we mature. <clears throat> so that um, we become less curious about something new and more concerned with protecting what we know. And that is what most people do when they, when they come to me or come to any other spiritual teacher, is the idea is they want to add something to the character. And I just want to tell you that you can't add to an imaginary character. You just can't add to it. You, you can't really subtract anything either, but you can see through. You can come to notice that the character is imaginary. 
you can come to see that the their very thing that wanted to wake up was awakeness itself. But it was awakeness itself, believing that it was a Fred or a Bob or a Mary or whatever. We, we have to be willing to let go of what we think is right, what we think is so. And that's very difficult to do. Spiritual people, uh, they're big readers. I mean, if you ever want a job, um, hanging out with uh, doing what you love and hanging out with uh, the smartest people in the world, become a non-dual teacher. <laughs> because that's the truth. It is, this is what I love. And I hang out with, with some of the smartest people on the planet all day, every day. So it's, we don't get any dummies here. We just don't. I mean, this, this and I don't just mean this teaching, but non-duality as a whole is just not, this doesn't attract very many dummies. It's attracting most people who have big minds and who have um, a, an overriding desire to, uh, to discover what's true. And initially that starts out as being discover what's true because I want to know. And the longer we hang around, the more it becomes, I want to discover what's true because it's really, really going to make Fred real cool then. I want to add to Fred. That's what I, I swear to God. That's what I want. That's where I was at. That's all. It was as good as it got for me was that I wanted to add to Fred. And I, 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 and I, I tried it and tried it and tried it. And for 10 years, it failed. 10 years, there was a glimpse. I, then, I, boom, the, the ego took the, over that real, real quick. And for the next 14 years, it was try to get that back because I know I got it right that time. I know I was right. And I know that I did it. And was, therefore, Fred needs to do just that again. But it didn't have anything to do with the Fred, right? I uh, talked to a client of mine this morning and we were talking about satsang and I said, well, you, you know, you've reached the point where you're clear when you are. And um, so you need to bring that to as an offering to satsang instead of coming with your hands open, which is what can you give me? Because there's no one here. So there's no point in coming to, in the hopes of clearing that person up. If a whiteness comes and wishes to uh, in, indulge in um, a little a little play and uh, in some and have some companionship and want to become clear about the truth of itself that's then now that's a whole different thing but most of us don't most of us want to improve what we've got, but we don't know what we have. In fact, what we do know is what we do know what we don't have. And what we don't have is a character. We don't have, uh, I mean, and, 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 uh, we don't have, a, 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 there's no personality. There's no center here. There is a personality, you know it well, and you love it or despise it, but it's, but it's just patterns. It's not a distinct thing. You can't put it aside. You can't bring it over here. You can't weigh it. You can't do anything. It's just because it's not there as a, as a thing in the middle. There's nothing in the middle of this body. If you were to rip it up and you would not find a little Fred in there. Same thing with the head. Do it. <clears throat> mm -mm, there's no Fred in there. I've looked and I've looked in, you know, by way of that too. <clears throat> just no Fred. But when we are, when we're smart people, smart people have big brains. Number one, big brains want to make things complicated. Well, this is not complicated. This is actually very, very simple. It's the most simple thing imaginable. Only it's not imaginable. <laughs> it really is not. It's, you can... Uh, you just can't imagine the truth. If you could imagine the truth, then I would tell you about it. But it can't be held in the mind. It can't be held in imagination. What truth is, is it's freedom from imagination. Because what truth is, is this as it is. And what imagination is, is, is some pretend this 
And it's really about what isn't. It's not about what is, it's about what's it in it. That's imagination, which is that um, I, 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 I certainly hope that I'm gonna, um, that, that I'm gonna get richer tomorrow. There's no tomorrow. And the, the richness may not be what you think it is. So be careful. You may get very, very rich and notice that you don't have much money. Because money is, number one, it's not going to bring you happiness. It's not going to cause misery either as a general rule. But for some it does, just because it's the end of the rainbow. And they, they don't have that promise of future. Like if you, well, if you just become a millionaire, you, then, then everything will be okay. Well, I know a lot of millionaires and I haven't had one of them tell me, you know, really in the end that everything was okay as long as they were believing that they were Bob the millionaire, okay? Um, when it came to be seen that it was a whiteness pretending to be a Bob, then there might be great happiness there and you get to keep the money. <laughs> or, you, you know, or you just decide that this is not the path for you, that this is not the path for you or the money is not the path for you. The fame is not the path for you. Becoming a professor, a psychologist, a theologian or whatever, that these are things um, that either appeal to you or don't. But don't have them be, be things that are held in the future. They can't wait until this happens and then I'll be okay. Children really think about right now. They live right now. And when I was a kid, I lived in a make-believe world. And my friends pretty much lived in a make-believe world, too. We all lived in a make-believe world. We, make, we were in a make-believe world where, um, where we had no responsibility and a lot of fun. That's, the, that's prior to school. School will pretty much rain on that parade. <laughs> But I didn't go to preschool, so uh, I had a little bit more time to kick around the neighborhood. And even after we start going to school, there's still a lot of, uh, of imaginative stuff going on. We don't have to be able to see something in order to be convinced by it. Um, you know, I can remember coming home. At night, sometimes our street was dark. It's quite dark. Uh, there weren't street lights at the beginning, I don't think. And there might have been, but if so, there weren't many. And um, so I would walk down the street in the dark, and then I would just get it in my head. I would just put it in my head. Well, there's the boogeyman out here. <laughs> there is a monster out here, and he wants to eat me for sure. And I would get terrified out there by myself in the middle of nothing, being unthreatened by anything, I would get terrified and I would run home as fast as I could. And when I got on my porch, that was almost base. I was almost like, it was very good to get on the porch of the home again. But once I, and I cracked that door and I got inside, <sighs> put your head back against the door. Thank God I made it. <laughs> I mean, and this is that, that as silly as that, stupid as that sounds, or as ridiculous as that sounds, that's exactly what we do as adults. That's exactly what we do in spirituality, is that we make stuff up and then we run down the street and then we get up the steps and open the door and put our back against the door. Whew. Thank God, I overcame that one again. I overcame that. I overcame that. I got away from that. The, 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 the boogeyman didn't get inside. In other words, I've come to see that there is no Satan. That's a big deal. The uh, coming to see that there, um, coming to see that there's, that. well, for me, really, it's just coming to see you know, that, that, that nothing works the way that we think it does. It doesn't, is that that the things that I'm terrified of, uh, like humiliation, humiliation was worse than death for me. I would have much rather died than be publicly humiliated. 
I don't care now. <laughs> I mean, I don't care that much. I've been sorry, been humiliated publicly. I really have. And um, having been uh, uh, humiliated publicly and noticing that I lived and having noticed that after having been publicly humiliated, humiliated that I have lived and I have prospered and that I have brought help and freedom and love to so very many people, guess what? It just might have been the best thing that ever happened. See, the things, the worst things that happen to us can turn out to be the best things. It just takes a little time. So I had a great fear of something that was really going to help me out a lot. And I didn't enjoy it when it was happening. It was agonizing. I can't begin to explain how agonizing it was. But it was not, it was not good. But it's, it, it's good that it happened. Number one, we can notice that it did happen. So it had to happen. Um, the becoming a spiritual teacher, if you're going to go on the internet, if not, if you're going in front of any kind of crowd or anything else, I don't care if you're just going to your neighbor, you got to be willing to go out there and say, hey, this is how I see it. And, uh, and, it, and it feels to me that this is, seems to me, this is true. And, and it you will be completely sold on what you're saying is true until you start trying to sell it to others. <laughs> and then it'd be like, God almighty, they're looking at me like a damn fool. And like I'm a damn fool, am I? Woo. And, but to be willing to, to be thought of as eccentric, crazy, wrong, whatever. None of that really bothers me anymore. I'm, I'm so far past all that, right? I'm sure that if my neighbors, the neighbors that know what I do, they think I'm crazy. Okay. <laughs> my, my, ther my, my physical therapist thinks I'm crazy. I know he does. So what? He's still my pal. He's still my buddy. It, it, my, it's not dependent about what, about what he thinks of me. And children... By and large, there are exceptional circumstances, but by and large, children don't care if you think they're crazy because they, they certainly understand crazy because they think you're crazy. <laughs> and given the fact that you're crazy, whatever you think about them, hell, who cares? That's just a nut. I'm not saying it works exactly like that, but it's sort of like that. Kids, kids can be humiliated. In, in a bad sort of way, I, I, I'm not, not suggesting that that can't happen and that it, that, that it would be nothing. What I'm saying is that kids are much more open to what is and much less swayed by what isn't so long as they didn't invent the what isn't. Like if you got something in your mind that you feel is just absolutely true and terribly scary and you tell me about it, I might think it's scary too and I might not. You know, I might just look at you and wonder, well, what is he doing and why? <laughs> Children are open. So the smarter we get, the less open we are, the more invested we get in our own ideas. We are just, we're so full of of knowledge god almighty there's just nothing more dangerous to authentic spirituality than than uh relative knowledge because this ain't about the relative i mean I'm, I'm not disengaging from the relative world there's an experience here and i love it i'm a worshiper of maya this is just great just as it is but Do you know what? I just lost that. I was somewhere in something. And, you know, and, and, and all of a sudden it just stopped. The words stopped. And when the words stop, I got to stop because I got nowhere to go. I mean, I, the, there's, Fred has nothing of value to share with you, although he thinks that he has something of great value. But there isn't anything here. So we're talking about openness. Become open to humiliation. I just 
confess to you, hell, I just lost my t- train of thought. I would have thought in, in any, any other situation, any other time in my life, if that had happened, I would have just frozen and I would have just dragged off the stage. I might have cried. I mean, God, I might, you don't know what would have happened. I might have shot myself. It would have been terrible. As it is, it ain't nothing. I just tell you the truth. Well, guess what? The word stopped. <laughs> and then we can move on. If long, because there's not going to be a pregnant pause in there as I readjust to get to some kind of topic so that you don't realize that I just lost it. I don't care. You know, if I, I don't finish, if I don't finish a thought or a sentence, I can notice that I couldn't have. Because this is it. This is it. And children are very much into this. And they they take this and they embroider it. Because as a child, I certainly, I believed in Santa Claus. Just talked to a little girl earlier today. And she believed in, and she was believing in Santa Claus. Santa Claus brought her a doll and she showed it to me. It was cute. And I was, there was some envy there. Some envy here from, from, from me, and not, 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 not in, in a big way, but it was just, gee whiz, that was so much fun to believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, right? And, 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 and all kinds of outlandish things. I lived, in a, the, uh, I lived in a fantasy world and it was great. And everything was open to investigation. <clears throat> but by mean, by, when what I mean by to investigate it was to simply let me pay attention to that for a while and see if that makes me feel good or if it does good things or if it, you know, or if it makes me sick, I won't eat any more of it, whatever it is. Kids are willing to try things and fail. Look how a tr- child tr- tries to learn to walk. I mean, can you imagine how a child would do if it tried to walk? That's, that's photos coming in from a friend of mine in um, Canada. And uh, so I love that, right? People send me photos and I, and I love the photos. I love to see what's going on in, in the world. I'm still curious. That's another way of stating that is that I'm still curious. What is Will up to today? What is Will's family up to today? What are they doing? Good God Almighty, let me check it out. We have to stay open to what's happening. We can't be closed because we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be wrong. Oh, God. Is that not the worst to be wrong? Oh my God, let me, and especially these smart people that I'm working with, I'm telling you that they would they'd rather go to the dentist and have all their teeth pulled than have it pointed out that they were absolutely wrong about a cherished belief. So if you want to hang on to all your cherished beliefs, beliefs don't come to me. I can't help you because I'm going to smash your most cherished belief. I promise you that. It, you will thank me for it. <laughs> but not going in, you will thank, for me, th- thank me for it after it's happened. I can pretty well guarantee you because I have people that send me gratitude mail every day. People are thanking me from all kinds of places. And uh, they're thinking the wrong thing, but I will, you know, but I'm, I'm willing to be the go-between. I'm willing to, 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 uh, to take the glory and give God the credit. <laughs> There's no Fred here. So whatever happens here, it's not happening to anybody. Whether it's trauma or delight, I had another client telling me today, talking about the, 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 you know, how things are in post-awakening, you know, the voice in his head, that voice is, <laughs> you know, he's just, it's gone missing. <laughs> it's not missing in action, it's missing in inaction. And I, and I get that completely because that's the experience over here, but it was not my experience as quickly as his has been. 
But this guy is a philosopher and he had a lot more, you know, just real sort of background than I did. I had a lot of background, but I had a lot of background mostly in what I was thinking about what I was reading, which as it turns out had very little to do with what I was, what I was reading had very little to do with what I thought it had to do with. That's the way is that I would read something. I would then misinterpret it. And I would say, great next book, please. And I would misinterpret that one. And then I would be disappointed that that one didn't free me or I'd be grateful for having learned so much and having made so much progress, whatever, but just give me the next one because everything's tied up in the future. What future is that? There's no future. There's no past. There's this here right now. That's it. There's nothing else. Children are willing to see that. I have long said that in order to be of real benefit to anybody, like for instance, in an awakening session, if I'm going to be of any real benefit, then I have to have a client who's willing and able to tell themselves the truth when it's presented to them. And there was a time when I would kick and scream to do my very best to see that you get it. And I, I, I really don't anymore. I just, uh, I try my very best to help you wake up, but I don't go beyond my best if you're not going beyond yours. And somebody has to want to wake up at least as much as I want them to in order for me to keep meeting them where they are. If I've got to try to, you know, motivate you to wake up, I mean, please <laughs> go haunt somebody else. I'm not, I'm, I, I can't do that, or I'm not, I'm, uh, it, it, I am unwilling to, to do that because it's, it's, it's not what, it's not what this teaching is actually all about. It's never about that, but, you know, I just noticed that this kind of unit, it can't let go of something once it gets started, or it couldn't, but it can now. And so <clears throat> when you remain closed to, to your ideas, I'm not going to make you open that door. I'm going to help you open that door. I can help you wake up. I can help you find freedom. I absolutely can, but I'm not going to make you. I'm not sure that I ever even could, but there was, were times, certainly there been many times when I got off a call and I've looked at Betsy and I said, nobody else in the world could have ever done that today, for that person today. And, and I and know that it was true. And... <clears throat> What I mean is that I overcame difficulties. And I'm, I'm, you know, awakening sessions are about difficulties. They're about units believing that they're having difficulties and coming to another unit to fix the difficulties. There are units out there who believe that they are not awake, which is a lie. It's a ball face lie. But, you know, but that's what, that's what we believe. And when we believe in something, we may begin to notice that we begin to live in that circumstance. So if you believe that you're not awake, guess what? Your experience is going to be that you're not awake. And it's not just as simple as saying, okay, I'm going to pretend like I'm awake. It's not like that. There's no way to trick this. But you can become open to giving up what you already know. There's, you know, the old Zen story about the, the teacher that, you know, the student that comes to the teacher with a cup and the, for, for tea and the teacher just can, can pours the tea and then continues to pour the tea and the tea is going everywhere. And, and the student says, you know, <clears throat> master, master, quit. I mean, the tea is going everywhere. And the, his teacher says to him, um, and that's the way you come to me. And sometimes I see that that's the way that people come in satsang. But most often people who come into satsang from, from, from out there are openly, they, they, at that stage at least, they are openly curious. Most. Some have come before to get me to see their way of side of things, but they are quickly dismissed. I'm not looking, I mean, you know, if, 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 if I want to know 
how you feel about things, I'll break into your satsang, but don't come into mine <laughs> and think you're going to teach us. Humility. <clears throat> Children have great humility. John, that's wrong. Why is that? Because I said so. Okay. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to. We have great faith as children and none as a, well, I mean, and most of us don't have a great deal of faith as adults. And a faith, I'm not talking about faith in some other God somewhere, some later time. I'm going to pray to try and reach or merge or whatever. There's only one thing going on. You're it. I'm it. This is it. And there's no other it. I, I, this unit can be said to be, it, it can't be said to be awake. It's not. There's an animating presence living in this dead flesh, essentially dead flesh. Take the animating presence away and it's dead. That's what we call dead, is when what you really are leaves this carcass. And when that happens, we call that dead. So it's the life in you that's important. Not really the body. I mean, we treat the body. We go in the hospital, we treat the body. And, 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 and all of that's important. But it's relatively important. What's truly important is the animating presence. And the purpose of the body is to be the host of that animating presence. In call it what you will, but that's essentially it. It's as, you know, it, it, or so I see it. You know, who knows? I, I could be wrong. I, I really could be, but it doesn't feel like I am over here. So I can keep talking like this until there's a sense that, hey, you've gone haywire. You're off the mark. I'm not tied down to the, the, even the ideas that are held here presently. I'm not. I have had the rug pulled out from me more since I became a spiritual teacher than I ever did before. Because as a spiritual teacher, you get to talking about things and you get convinced about things and their new patterns develop. And, and, and then one day there's this, Oh, it worked like this? And you were doing your best at the time, and it's, and it's what somebody needs. It's what somebody, and whenever anybody's listening to this, they need what is being said. But it does not mean that they can't advance from, from what's being said here now. If I tell you something today, and, I and then I tell you something different tomorrow, you know, then, then believe what I say in the at in, in the, the most current time, the closest to the current time as possible. Because there's, everything's changing all the time. I've had to, you know, when, back when I had a, just a oneness teaching, my God, I mean, I, I do not want to move away from that. I wanted to stay ensconced in what was already successful, what was already, you know, paying off for Fred, but it would not let me stay there. It forced me to move beyond all of that. And somewhere second between, I don't know, somewhere I think around three years of teaching, maybe uh, uh, then boom, everything changed. And I just had to come out and say different stuff. Not that I was, I was not retracting what I had said before, and I'm still not retracting anything I've said before because I looked at videos from seven, eight years ago that are clear as a bell, right? They really are. And, but I can also see where they are clear as a bell for somebody at that level. And that, that there can be very helpful. It may be helpful to people that are not on that level. It may be above that. I just hadn't seen it that way. But 
it doesn't mean that any way is the way. There's no one here to get sold, to be still, to take credit. So don't expect me to admire your spiritual beliefs when you come here. Because I already know before you get here that they're wrong, that they're off. And for you to tell me that you're invested in what you're doing now, don't come. When you come and you tell me I want to really want to get out of the, 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 the psychological or mental uh, intellectual rut that I'm in, and I'm willing to, to actually follow what you do and what, you, what you're saying and what you're doing and what we're doing together and all of that, that's when help will arrive for you. And it, you, you, it, the, they say that, you know, when the student is ready, they always said the teacher will, sh will, will appear. But I'm just saying that when the student is ready, the teaching will appear. And it might be my teaching. Or it might be Ajashanti's. I don't know. There's not a lot of argument between the two, but they're certainly not the same. But if you're going to throw your lot, if you're drawn here, you got to ask yourself why. Right. Um, I had idols, you know, like Eckhart Tolle and Ajashanti and lesser others. But and I and, and this is good. I didn't make any sense to me. I just found out I was compelled to read it. And now I've not I've not grown out of it. And I've been studying for a long, long time. because I'm curious as to what effect he can have on me because he always there's always an effect in what he says to me. And I mean, to me, in the sense that there's a singular sense that there's a singular Nisargadatta that is my guru and he speaks to me. And that's, you know, it's all hyperbole, but um, it sounds good. You know, it sounds good to the, to the character and all that, which the character that isn't. I've gone on long enough. The uh, drop everything that you think you know and then read the book that you're getting ready to read. Drop everything you think you know already and then go to the get together that you're going to go to with the non dual retreat or whatever it is, or intensive or something. Don't go there carrying your own ideas and expect your own ideas to somehow fit with what you're gonna hear and experience. Don't, 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 don't be sold on your uh, own ideas of the way things are and come here because things are not, if you are not presently awake, then things are not the way you think they are across the board, no exceptions. Be as little children. Be open to the truth and the truth will shut. It can't not. Because it already is. The truth is already here. It's not here for you, it's here as you. But you won't understand that until you do. I hope this helps. See you later. Bye-bye. I love you.